Hey there, welcome to another week of Dr. Tell Me Why, your favorite channel here on YouTube. At least, I hope it is. <laughs> I really doubt it is. Here at Dr. Tell Me Why, my mission statement is to explain complex ideas in medicine simply so that they are understandable by everyone. This is basically a health education channel. So if this sounds like the kind of content that you want to see here on YouTube or the kind of content that might interest you, then you should definitely hit that subscribe button. So today's show is all about dopamine, what it is and what it does and the misconceptions that exist about it and there are so many misconceptions, it's unbelievable. Dopamine gets a pretty bad reputation despite being pretty dope if you ask me. Dopamine is portrayed by the media as being the pleasure-seeking brain chemical. People will typically blame dopamine for having that chocolate cake after dinner rather than going on that run that they were planning to go on forever and ever and ever. Please go on that run, it's good for you. Dopamine is portrayed as being the reason why people go for experiences that feel good in the short term but are actually bad for them in the long run. So let's start with some quick facts. What is dopamine? Dopamine is a neurotransmitter and what is a neurotransmitter? A neurotransmitter is a substance that neurons, which are the cells in your brain, use to communicate with one another. Exactly like I'm using language right now to speak to you guys. Many of these ideas about dopamine being the pleasure-seeking brain chemical are really outdated. We know that many of these ideas are outdated because of experiments that we got to perform on mice. Scientists took a select group of mice and destroyed the dopamine-producing cells in their brains. Despite having no dopamine-producing cells in their brain, the mice were still able to enjoy food when it was presented to them. The only thing that changed when removing dopamine from the equation or dopamine from the brains of those mice was that the mice were no longer willing to put in the effort to work for their food, but they were entirely happy to consume it if it was presented to them. And we know of other brain neurotransmitters that are actually responsible for feelings of euphoria and feelings of pleasure, namely serotonin, oxytocin, and endorphins. Dopamine is basically responsible for motivation. But what exactly is motivation? Motivation is that impulse, it's that very quick calculation that your brain does every single time you take an action to make that decision whether the action is worthwhile or worth its time or not. It's a calculation between the potential reward and the perceived effort to that action. You know, like actually enjoying that chocolate cake because it tastes good, but then the effort being having to go to the store and buy it. Another good example is getting out of bed to film this YouTube video despite being extremely tired and wanting nothing more in life than to have a drink and get some sleep, I suppose. I still do it anyway because I enjoy doing this for you guys, so the perceived reward is definitely worth the effort in my case. Today it's recognized that motivation is far from monolithic, in fact it comes in three different forms. It comes in forms of liking, wanting, or learning. The differences between the three can be subtle, so let me explain it like this. You're motivated to eat that chocolate cake because you like the taste of it. You're motivated to run that marathon because you want to get fit and you want to lose weight. Meanwhile, learning is a little different because it involves repeated cycles of liking and wanting and liking and wanting again, and it is the process through which you learn to desire or crave something. This is especially important in things like addiction. Consistent drug use has significant effects on your brain as it leads to a state of constant stimulation. Your brain responds to this overstimulation by either decreasing the overall production of dopamine or reducing the number of dopamine receptors. Many scientists think that this is the reason why many drug addicts will require drugs to feel some kind of normal. It's because there is an overall down regulation of dopamine affecting the reward and the motivation pathways of the brain. In fact, many psychostimulant drugs, drugs like MDMA and cocaine, will produce such high concentrations of dopamine in the brain that they will saturate all the dopamine receptors. Saturate meaning fill all the available receptors. And this might explain why people who take ecstasy on a rave typically feel very tired and not really motivated to do anything the morning after.
but this also offers interesting opportunities for addiction therapy. In a recent study, scientists were able to upregulate the number of dopamine receptors in methamphetamine users by encouraging them to engage in regular aerobic exercise. It is hoped that this could be used to reduce cravings and drug use in the future. And another interesting idea that's popped up in the media recently is this idea of going on a dopamine detox or a dopamine fast. But what exactly is a dopamine detox? What is a dopamine fast? The idea behind a dopamine detox or a dopamine fast, it stems from this idea that in our modern lifestyles, we are surrounded or in a state of complete overstimulation things like social media. Have you ever posted a picture on Instagram or on Facebook and then proceeded to check your phone every three minutes looking to see how many likes you got? Well, that involves a dopamine system too and it involves motivation. Every single time you pick up your phone, that's effort involved. And when you check your phone to see how many likes you received on that picture, well, that is a reward in of itself, feeling socially validated by friends and family. The concept behind going on a dopamine fast or a dopamine detox is that by giving your brain a break from all this constant overstimulation, you can learn to reset your brain and go back to normal functioning levels of dopamine. You can learn to enjoy things that you previously found mundane, things that you were no longer interested in. People who go through a dopamine fast or a dopamine detox typically say that they feel that life becomes a little bit more enjoyable once they come out of their detox or their fast. And while there's a lot of debate between scientists on whether a dopamine fast or a dopamine detox actually works, here are some proven ways to feel a little bit more motivated to get something done, whatever it may be. Scientists typically recommend breaking one big job into lots of smaller ones. By breaking it into lots of smaller ones with lots of mini deadlines, you give yourself a little motivation boost. This is because every single time you finish one small part of that big job that's ahead of you, dopamine kicks in to give you a sense of reward and a sense of enjoyment and a sense of accomplishment, allowing you or motivating you to keep going. Communicating your results with other people will typically allow them the chance to recognize your work and give you lots of positive feedback, which again can motivate you to keep going. You can also try constantly reminding yourself of just how great you're going to feel when you get the job done or the reward that's at the end of the road, that paycheck that's waiting for you, for example. And there are plenty, plenty more of other methods that you can try to feel a little bit more motivated in your day to do things and be a little bit more active or proactive or whatever it is. Anyway, um... If you enjoyed this video, don't keep it a secret. Tell the YouTube algorithm that. You can do that by pressing the like button. What this does is it tells YouTube that you thought my content was worthwhile or worth your time. And YouTube will then be motivated to go on and recommend my content to other people. Which is unbelievably useful as a small YouTuber because this is the way that people find out about who you are. If you really love this video, then please feel motivated to smash the subscribe button. That way you can keep tabs on all the great medical content that I have lined up for you in the future. If you really hated this video, then please leave me a comment telling me why you hated this video so much and I will read your comment and maybe I'll be motivated to change things around in my next video. 